approaches. She has a PhD in sociology from Barcadilla University in Nepal. She's a UGC Net qualified social work and also UGC Net qualified in sociology. Presently, Dr. Ranji Sharma is working as professor in Chagra Lake City University, Nepal. She has conducted various training programs, such as training of counselors in family counseling centers of Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, sponsored by Central Social Welfare Food and Training Programs of MP State AIDS Control Society. She has published research papers in reputed national and international journals and presented papers in conferences. Her research interest areas are sustainable development, community participation, social cohesion, sociology of the youth, and organizational culture. So we welcome you back. We are honored to have you with us. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I'm thankful to uh, RRC Alva College uh, for inviting me. And uh, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, that you people always keep on organizing such uh, wonderful sessions and promoting uh, awareness and giving, uh, you know, uh, a platform to people to exchange their views. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, dear participants, um, uh, so today I will be going to talk about energy and uh, environment conservation as that is the topic. Uh, I will be going to share my slides. Kindly let me know, uh, is it visible or not? And whether the slides are moving or not, that also please kindly let me know. Uh, are my slides visible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. I'm moving to the second slide. Uh, are the slides moving? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so, dear participants, uh, today I'm going to talk about energy and environment conservation, adding one more R as what. Uh, uh, Shivasta Sar was telling in our last uh, session, reduce, reuse, recycle. So I'm adding one more R in it, that is the resilience. So the topic on which I will be focusing is that uh, how to conserve environment and what would be should be our approach toward this conservation. So our approach needs to be resilience, which we are will be going to focus more on. So first, let us know what is the meaning of resilience. Resilience means bouncing back and returning to a previous state after a disturbance. Means if some kind of problem is there, yes, the problem is there, but a person, an individual knows that the, the challenges will keep on coming, but how you are going to react to those challenges and how you will be going to deal with these challenges is more important. So in the similar way, when we are talking about the environmental uh, conservation, here also the challenges will keep on coming because Mother Earth as what is we have seen or we have heard from our जो हमारे पूर्वज हैं जो जो भी हमने उन्हें देखा है और या सुना है उनसे या हम अगर जो हमारे books हैं उनको देखते हैं तब हम देखते हैं कि अर्थ बहुत अलग तरीके से धरती माता जो है वो बहुत ही अलग काफी हरा भरा सब था और हमारे जो पूर्वज जो हमें बताते हैं कि पहले के टाइम पे इतनी गर्मी नहीं होती थी अचानक से इतनी ठंड अचानक से इतनी बारिश नहीं होती थी तो ये जो चेंजेस आ रहे हैं इनको हम कैसे डील करेंगे वी कैन नॉट जस्ट शट अवर आईज हम अपनी आईज क्लोज नहीं कर सकते कि नहीं हम आंखें बंद कर लेंगे तो ये चेंजेस नहीं होंगे चेंजेस आएंगे दैट इज व्हाट इज लाइफ बट हाउ वी विल बी गोइंग टू डील विद दिस चेंजेस और अदर व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द चैलेंजेस सो मोर ब्रॉडली व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द रिजिलियंस दिस टर्म इज डिस्क्राइब नॉट जस्ट द एबिलिटी टू मेंटेन एसेंशियल फंक्शन आइडेंटिटी एंड स्ट्रक्चर बट आल्सो द कैपेसिटी फॉर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन सो इफ द 
challenges are there we need to transform we need to um, deal with those challenges and for that we need to be mentally prepared so the psychology as well as the our social support is very much required in maintaining the uh, in dealing with these challenges when we are talking about the climate change resilience refers to ecological resilience or the ability of a natural system to rebound after disturbance resilience refers to the ability of a system such as an ecosystem to take advantage of resources or cope with consequences for example if some natural disaster takes place we we can we just can't sit there to just keep on worrying about that oh this has happened we have to do something so we start looking for now what to do and that is what is uh, resilience is about that how you bounce back to the challenges which are there in um, when we're talking about in our personal life in our professional life or when we are talking about the environmental challenges so the traits for climate resilience are three traits are there as you can see on the slide permeability productivity and landform complexity now what are these traits so permeability is which is also called local connectivity which allows a species to both access local resources resources such as nutrients and landforms and to sustain expected ecological processes such as flooding or any kind of natural disasters or natural disturbances which are happening around next is trait is productivity which is also called nutrient distribution where the nutrients available at a site or at a place can support a species abilities to survive and reproduce and the third resilience trait is landform complexity which is also known as landform diversity it is reflected in the creation of microclimates that can provide suitable localized condition for a species to persist. So these are the three important resilience traits if we are talking about the concept of resilience from the climate or from the environment perspective. So adding one more R to what we have already studied or learned lot in when we uh, talk about the environment uh, conservation, reduce, recycle, reuse, and be resilient in our approach. Now, when you're talking about energy, we all know that it can be categorized into two. One is the renewable and other is the non-renewable. We know that about 7% of energy used is renewable, which can be easily replenished, which includes solar energy, wind energy, geothermal, biomass from plants, and hydropower from turbines at a dam. So these are replicable, means which can be renewed. About 93% of energy used is non-renewable. Please pay attention, the percentage, as you can see, that 93 maximum major, major percentage is which cannot be renewed quickly. Non renewable energy includes petroleum oil, natural gas, coal, uranium. So, what is the need? Why we should worry about to conserve our environment or think about what is the connection that why we are so much um, uh, worried about this kind of crisis? Since most of the energy we use comes from non renewable fossil fuels, conservation reduces demand and lessens negative environmental impact. That's why the need is there for environment conservation if we are talking it for energy um, um, perspective. So the energy choices we make, now please remember here, in uh, we are responsible for whatever we are creating in uh, leaving our footprints uh, um, on, in our environment. So we, the choices which we make as a society influence our air and water quality and water supply among other impacts. In an evolving energy landscape, how do we make sustainable energy decisions that balance environmental, economic, and societal objectives? 
so we cannot just uh, say that in order to promote energy we will not look for the development we will not go for the development uh, projects no definitely we have to go for it because somewhere or the others we have to fulfill the economic and societal objectives also but not at the cost of the environmental objectives there are the various environmental issues which we are facing and which we are very well aware about which are directly linked to energy like greenhouse effect global warming ozone layer destruction acid rain formation radiation and health radiation and health is becoming very much it is uh, it is affecting even the um, um, the baby who is not yet born so we can see that how these are these issues are affecting human beings or other living beings also the process of converting fossil fuels to energy results in many harmful outcomes the combustion of fossil fuels produces emissions including carbon dioxide carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen oxides and particular matter nearly all of these have negative impacts on environment as well as on our health carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and source of global warming Sulfur dioxide causes acid rain, respiratory illnesses, and heart diseases. Nitrogen oxide damages lungs, and particular matter causes hazy conditions and contributes to asthma and chronic bronchitis. So we can see that the increase in rate of these uh, health-related um, uh, conditions or diseases is all because we are not taking proper care of our environment. Energy needs to be conserved to cut costs and to preserve those resources for longer use. Conventional energy sources pollute the environment by emitting harmful gases into the atmosphere. Conventional energy sources are also limited and they will be going to expire one day. In addition to preserving resources, energy conservation saves money and improves the quality of our environment. So, yes, definitely energy plays very important role in our life. And in order to uh, conserve our environment, we should think about the conservation of energy also. The consumption of energy, we uh, use it in our homes, businesses, industries, and transportation. Major sources of energy consumption are industrial, as 31 percent we use it to include facilities and equipments used for manufacturing agriculture mining and construction and this is increasing day by day as we are progressing or developing economically another uh, major segment where the energy is consumed is transportation which includes vehicles that transport people or goods such as cars, trucks, buses, motorcycles, trails, subways, aircrafts, boats, etc. Residential consumption accounts for 22%. It consists of our homes or apartments. Commercial is for 19%. It includes buildings such as offices, malls, stores, schools, hospitals, hotels, restaurants, churches, uh, various places, etc. Energy systems plays a critical role in determining our ability to achieve global sustainability in the short and long term. So nowadays we are talking about the sustainable development goals, SDGs, we all are aware about 2030 agenda. As energy systems depend on natural resources and are among the most significant drivers of environmental impacts on the Earth's physical and living system, so they are very important. So what, what should be the goals or how we can think of conserving energy and also uh, um, and, and, um, taking care of our environment? So we need to evaluate the impacts of changes in the energy system because and unless and until we know the impact as how these uh, the usage of the energy is um, uh, causing uh, harm or uh, um, to the environment or on our health, 
it will be we will not be able to understand that we need to have some control on this consumption assess the impacts of air quality on biomass as an energy source identify and analyze models and approaches to assist with understanding impacts of emerging energy technologies and resources so these goals are which we should look forward and we need to accomplish these goals to protect the environment green growth is there nowadays it is um, we call when we are talking about the until now whenever we talk about the development of growth we just used to look into the economic perspective that okay what is the economically what we are gaining but now the green growth has uh, changed the entire concept of development or the growth concept so green growth can be defined as economic progress that fosters environmentally sustainable low carbon and socially inclusive development pursuing green growth involves outlining a path to achieving economic growth and well-being while using fewer resources and generating fewer emissions in meeting demands for food production transport construction housing and energy policies and investments that promote green growth seek to improve the eco efficiency of growth which involves minimizing resource use and negative environmental impacts for each unit of benefit generated by the economy green growth is a prerequisite for building a green economy so whenever the policies which are now being framed there is a drastic change when the people they said uh, for the framing or uh, for the any kind of policy which is related to development they think of now about green growth because it will be going to build green economy so what is green economy a green economy is characterized by substantially increased investments in economic activities that build on and enhance the earth's natural capital or reduce ecological scarcities and environmental risks activities such as renewable energy low carbon transport energy and water efficient buildings sustainable agriculture and forest management and sustainable fisheries so all this are the essential part of the green economy nowadays energy efficiency concept is being used and we need to apply it day to day life in order to save money and energy because ultimately it will lead to protect the environment and which is our ultimate you can say the aim uh, of uh, sbgs or even when we are talking about the green growth so how to do this what it is very easy to say yes promote uh, green economy promote green go for green growth but how how to go ahead in this first and foremost is that we should be aware about it so for that we should have enough knowledge and information on the main operating principles of devices plants we are using as to make right decision in selecting the most energy efficient and economical choice so as to uh, enhance our energy conservation behavior the energy conservation is any behavior that results in the use of less energy and since most of the energy we use comes from non renewable fossil fuels conservation reduces demand and lessens negative environmental impact in addition to preserving resources energy conservation saves money and improves the quality of our environment also so yes we need to promote the energy conservation behavior we are when we are talking about how or what how to promote it we need to be aware about the meaning of certain terms that is the clean energy when we are talking about energy now we are talking about the clean energy so we need to promote and invest in clean efficient and climate resilient energy systems emphasizing energy efficiency renewable energy access to energy for all energy sector reforms capacity building and governance so these are the important elements in promoting clean energy livable cities when we are talking about because yes 
um, the urbanization will take place. We cannot just, uh, uh, you know, uh, change the time and we cannot uh, go for as what we used to live uh, in the earlier uh, time in the rural society. But the cities or the urbanization which is happening, it should be livable. Where the life is considered more important and the facilities need to be centered around it. So with the increasing urbanization of the region, there will be significant benefits to developing climate resilient and livable cities emphasizing integrated urban planning, improved access to urban water and sanitation services, enhanced waste management services and infrastructure, sustainable urban transport. So definitely the challenges are there with the urbanization, but we need to adapt now a resilient approach in dealing these challenges. Next important is water and sanitation. As water crisis are projected to continue to increase, improving access to reliable and affordable water infrastructure and services for safe water and sanitation, while reducing climate and natural disaster risk, and increasing the quality and sustainability of surface water and groundwater through integrated water resources management and conservation is of great necessity. And this is not anything new for us. This is what we have like um, the we can see and we can we have read it. We have seen Harappa, uh, Mohanjodaro. Uh, These the, the places are very well structured. Um, uh, town planning was there where the need of the people in uh, um, uh, association with the environment conservation was taken care of. If we go through our uh, Vedas or our the ancient scriptures, uh, irrespective of whichever religion, uh, we will find that very small, you know, um, very uh, uh, there are the certain uh, uh, key points are there which can be taken to um, incorporate in our today's life to have a much more new, uh, coexistence of human beings or living beings with the environment. Irrigated agriculture, when we are talking about the agriculture sector consumes the largest share of water, partially as a result of considerable inefficiencies in its use. A more eco-efficient agriculture sector that minimizes or avoids the negative impacts of intensive agriculture related to the intensive use of chemical energy and other inputs while maintaining productivity will require efficient irrigation system as well as climate resilient improved crop varieties and cropping systems so the steps where we can put our my as an individual how we can promote green growth and we uh, um, uh, have our inputs in protecting our Mother Earth. Unplug electronic appliances when not in use. Set computers and electronic devices to energy saving settings. Turn off the lights when you leave the room. Use less water when showering, washing the dishes, and doing laundry. Limit the use of elevators by using the stairs wherever possible. Buy compact fluorescent light bulbs for your most used lights. Walk, buy carpool, or use public transportation when possible. It is good for health also. Recycle every chance you get. When we are talking about the transport, the, it has become very clear that the transport infrastructure, regardless to its capacity, will not be able to accommodate the ever increasing number of private vehicles and that congestion and air pollution are costing national economies a large percentage of their GDP. Shifting towards energy efficient and sustainable modes of transportation, for example, urban rail, bus rapid transit, as well as non-motorized transport, with a focus on investments in clean, low carbon climate, resilient, safe, efficient, accessible and affordable transport systems will provide significant benefits to urban populations of the region.
so the sustainable use of transport system when we are talking about because we cannot ignore like uh, um, the ways uh, as how the development is taking place the transport is taking its own uh, toll the use of transport is taking its own toll on environment so our own effort, we need to improve our vehicle fuel efficiency. Yes, in the earlier slides, I have talked about um, for um, using, uh, you know, for carpool or using um, cycle to go or walk wherever if it's a nearby place. Uh, but when we are talking about the vehicles as it is being used, and you can see on roads, more and more number of vehicles are increasing day by day and which is uh, creating a um, problem with all kinds of pollution and so the first and foremost if we are using vehicle we should avoid idling idling is something like you know keeping the uh, engine on whenever you are either at the uh, in the traffic um, waiting for the traffic light to go green or waiting for your friend to get inside the uh, vehicle so don't keep the engine uh, on um, remove excess weight and avoid keeping unnecessary items in your car i have seen people uh, you know putting so many items in their car and they just take it out when they have to do, go for uh, servicing of their vehicle combine errands whatever you want to do the work or the activities try to uh, plan it in a way so that in one trip it will you it, you can maximize the uh, use of the vehicle to complete the task avoid aggressive driving and drive steadily at posted speed limits this is something which is you know the uh, aggressive driving is something which is being can be seen or the um, the traffic crossing the um, um, not following the traffic rules is also the the problems which we can see uh, around us avoid rapid accelerations and braking which burn more fuel use your air conditional in your vehicle only when it is required not always keep your tires properly inflated if possible choose a more efficient wing so it is our responsibility that we are having you know what should i say it is over consumerism we are getting so many products so many things are there but we need to take the wise decision as what is important for us or what is they are just only for show off. So we should not go for show off. Just the necessity uh, is there. We should go and purchase those products or the commodities because whatever we are using now, there is a time limit or a time till that product is being used. And after that, how we are, um, uh, you know, uh, throwing it, it is how we are. Uh, discarding it is more important because if it is not able if you're not properly uh, discarding it then it will be going to create more problem for the our environment and which will be going to affect us as well as our future generation so to conclude i would say save energy save environment and adopt a resilient approach in your life in saving the environment as well as dealing the challenges of personal life or as well as the environmental challenges also because if the environment is not there just think of that if we don't have if uh, you know the nature stops working if sun doesn't shine if winds don't blow what will we we be able to survive kya hum zinda reh payenge nahi so we have to save our environment and yes we need to save energy thank you so much very good information by dr uchi sharma thanks a lot ma'am Thanks a lot.
thank you so much thank you uh, uh, so much thank you uh, i'm thankful to the participants also for listening to my uh, session thank you so much welcome uh, today session is over tomorrow we'll be, we will meet again at 8:45 sharp rrc alwar rajasthan india thanks a lot bye Thank you.